Hello everyone, um, I'm very pleased to welcome uh, for this next panel um, Sophie Boissard, just on my right. Uh, Sophie held uh, various positions in the public sector and then you joined the uh, SNCF group and now you are CEO of Corian, who provides services and housing for elderly people across Europe and quite an important share actually of your business and your workforce is located in, uh, in France of course but also in Germany. So that's why it, it will be very interesting to have this broad perspective. Uh, Gottfried Ludwig, uh, I'm, I'm very pleased to welcome you as well. Uh, you are Senior Vice President of T-Systems, which is an IT services company and a subsidiary of uh, Deutsche Telekom. And you will lead the healthcare um, division uh, of T-System. And before that, you were uh, head of the Department of Healthcare Digitalization at the German Federal Ministry of Health. And uh, Katharina Falkmer, uh, you are Chief Strategy Officer at uh, Nui Care. Uh, Nui Care is a young uh, German company focusing on providing help uh, to caregivers. Um, so you, you will uh, you will develop an assistant to support these family caregivers and you will uh, tell more about your, your, your business. Um, so, um, the, uh, we, we have to address a quite challenging issue. Uh, the the healthcare system, uh, both in France and in Germany, is actually under pressure. Um, so, um, the idea of this panel is to share your views on how to help reduce uh, this pressure. But first of all, maybe uh, it will be interesting to, to have your views and, uh, and to understand more what's going on actually in France and in Germany regarding the healthcare system. So maybe uh, I will first uh, start with you, Sophie Boissar. Um, fr from your point of view, uh, what are the main challenges the healthcare system is facing in France? Um, uh, we have this demographic change ongoing, and uh, we know that uh, we, we need healthcare uh, work workers. So, what's going on exactly? Okay, thank you very much, Solène. I'm very happy to be here with you um, today. Um, I, I could answer, you know, like uh, uh, the councillor that said that it's, it's the economy is stupid. In our case, it's really about its demographics and about epidemiologics. And we have actually the same challenges, not only in France and Germany, but uh, all, across all uh, developed countries. If you just look ahead, uh, we will uh, have, we will face a major aging of population around plus 40% of people aged 65 and above and beyond in, in the next decade. And in combination with that, we have to face the major shift in epidemiologics with this non communicable disease, uh, meaning actually a chronic disease. And just one figure is that actually is the same uh, in, in, in both countries, for, for France as well as for Germany, 80% of people aged 65 and beyond suffer at least from one chronic disease. So I think the, 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 we have to really to face a fully, a fully new situation where we have a vast majority of the population that deserve low intensity care. And we have been equipping our countries really based on large and highly specialized hospital platforms. And this is really the challenge we have actually to face and to overcome in all countries and in our both countries, uh, starting with them now. And COVID came on the top of this shift that started uh, some years ago and has been accelerating the trends. And this is why we are now under pressure. That's absolutely true. And we have to rethink the way we face the challenge. And it starts with people, with HR, HR planning, which is not, I would say, the most developed skill in, in both systems. Um, it also starts uh, with a very different approach coming from this 
hospital central uh, central vision uh, f with a ecosystem and connection approach and therefore we definitely need digital in the center in the core center of it so we need to come from physical platform to actually widely connected network connecting people connecting the skilled nurses medical paramedics that we need to face those challenges so that's what we have to do uh, it's uh, definitely a huge change and it requires actually a very strong commitment both from public authorities from players from care providers and also from the professions and this is actually what we need to to build what is i would say undergo on the way in both countries but of course the transformation is pretty uh, pretty significant and uh, the covid on the top of that has actually created a kind of additional layer of pressure so that's for me the, the, the and and it all starts with people if, if if we just have maybe one last figure um uh, average uh, duration for a skilled nurse and this is true both in france and germany so when you have someone graduating as nurse average six year in the profession and the less we actually uh, train and qualify skilled nurses the more burden on the shoulder of the ones that are acting as nurses and the less they stay actually they remain as uh, nurse professionals so we have currently a huge turnover of profession of uh, profession uh, of skilled uh, nurses uh, in the system and we haven't been rethinking uh, the workforce planning according to that so we, we should actually double the number of people we train every year the young one the middle-aged one also the people that are uh, highly seasoned and want to come back to care and for the time being this HR planning is not in place and so this is why there is such a pressure on the professionals that are uh, currently acting uh, as nurses or paramedics and also as physicians Thank you, Katharina. And maybe do you share also this idea that one of the main problems is to find the people to, to, to take care of the elderly people? And um, maybe you, you, you can explain also how new care can, can help with this problem? Yeah, so thank you very much for the invitation and uh, putting a little bit more light on this very important discussion. As uh, Ms. Boswa also just said, um, it needs it's, it's people who will be taken care of and it needs people to, to take care of them. But um, maybe a little bit more quickly <laughs> recap on NUI. So um, I'm the Chief Strategy Officer at NUI Care and um, doing this, we are looking on a daily basis into this challenge. How do we help uh, caregivers? And we are looking into um, informal caregivers. So we are looking at um, a, a little bit of a different uh, part uh, of um, or kind of um, people. So we are looking in how to help and empower uh, informal caregivers. So caregivers who are taking care of uh, people at home. Because as uh, Ms. Boswa just said, we have in Germany, we have about uh, four and a half million people that are in need of care. And we have about one million that are taken care of in senior care homes. But that left us with three and a half million people taken care of at home. And 80% of these people are taken care of by informal caregivers, mostly loved ones at home. These can be any one of us. Any one of us could be in the next moment be taking care of their loved ones or their partner, their parents maybe. And this is a very, very big challenge and it's a great job that people are doing. Um, I know that from a personal perspective actually because I worked for 15 years. I worked for um, big agencies and for big uh, companies including Nestle, uh, Coca-Cola and BMW. And um, one day I got, I got this challenge. But I just explained. So I 
I um, got the news, or we got the news of my uh, grandma having a terminated illness, and I uh, did quit my job back then working for Coca-Cola uh, globally um, to actually take care of my grandma at home. And that left me with, um, with a very difficult situation, but ultimately, for me, the most important job of all the jobs that I've done so far. And um, I was surprised actually how little there is in terms of help for these people who are taking care. These are people like you and me, like every one of us, who don't have, and what Ms. Vaswa just said, it usually takes uh, a long year of experience to do this very hard job, and these people don't have it. So um, what I believe is that we, um, um, and we are facing uh, what we just heard, we are facing a situation where we all get older, and there won't be enough people to take care of all of us, uh, of, of the people, and this gap will be bigger. And uh, without the informal caregivers, um, the system would just break. And um, one of the solutions uh, is uh, the um, is a hybrid solution or a digital solution, actually. So we um, at NUI and I believe in general, we need to empower informal. We need to empower informal caregivers who are doing this great job. And um, at NUI, we are looking at a hybrid solution. Um, and now coming to the point, we're looking at a hybrid solution so that we, for on the one hand, that we have digital solutions like an, uh, an app actually that would help you or every one of us with information you might need, with an overview of the bureaucracy that we have in Germany to get, for example, financial support, to um, help you with all the organizational struggle that you are getting into. And this is one part. So for me, digital, and I believe you agree, or <laughs> you do, uh, that we have uh, the uh, digitalization or that digital can help us uh, with this challenge that we are facing. However, like Ms. Boswa just said, it's people. And we are developing a solution where you have all this information, help with bureaucracy, help with organization, all the different challenges you might face. Plus, you always have like a kind of chatbot in your pocket uh, so that you anytime can ask. Plus, we have now at NUI also a hybrid solution, meaning you can actually call us with any question you might have or one might have uh, regarding care. And that is just um, one other solution that we believe is needed. Thank you. <laughs> Fried, maybe you can explain how we can uh, we can um, how digitalization can actually help to reduce the pressure on the health system. What kind of services um, uh, can be developed, and um, maybe you can also help us to understand where where uh, where do we stand in terms of digitalization for health? Because it's we are talking a lot about people and how how digital can help us. Actually, it's not very clear for everybody. Yes, so thank you very much, first of all, for having me, and thank you very much. I mean, the Fibosa already pointed out what kind of huge challenge we are, we are we are staying in front of, right? And this is not depending if we are looking at France or if you're looking in, in in Germany. I think it's worldwide, and especially in Europe, it's really an enormous challenge we are facing. And to come to your question, obviously, the only chance we have is to use digitalization. You know, we don't actually have any other chance. We don't have the people like today uh, or like we had maybe 20 or 30 years ago who had the time to do the whole documentation, spending like 40% of their day-to-day -day work with documenting what they are doing instead of treating the people. You know, just to give you this little example, we don't have the people, so we have to support them so that they can focus on what they are doing. So this is one thing how technology, how digitalization can help. And another aspect, uh, I mean, we are one of, of the leading system integration like companies, right? For me, one of the main challenges at the moment is also how do we connect the different data points we have in the system, in the hospital, in the nursing care, in the doctor's office, in NUI care, in any kind of application, to learn more about the diseases, the chronic diseases, how we can prevent that. Because we have a lot of people getting ill where I think where we have now probably more knowledge or we are capable of 
learning more out of the diseases, diseases so we can help them to or we can prevent the diseases to become so like um like like crucial that we can have the care maybe in a later stage and um, so this is a very very important topic for me um to 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 ask ourselves how we can combine the data sets regarding patients regarding diseases and then help to have a better prevention system. And this is what the Fibosa pointed out perfectly because we are in the middle of a transformation. The system is spending a lot of money. You know, in Germany, just for care, we are spending about 55 billion. And for health insurance, we are spending 260 billion euro per year. And the question is, how can we like shift the money invested into the physical system into a more technology-oriented, patient-centric system we're using and fostering digitalization. And the last point is, how actually can we come to a European solution or to a German-French solution? Because today, if I look at a technological application, like helping that, you know, like, like you probably, you are going from every regulatory office to every other regulatory office, and you try to enter the market, and that's quite challenging. And if, because we're talking about German-French cooperation, and we're talking about sovereignty of data and healthcare systems and all of that, I think one step forward would be really uh, to foster a common, at least, regulator, reg regulative perspective perspective onto technology. I'm not talking about reimbursement, that's a different topic, but at least having this kind of perspective, what is a medical application, how do we define that, and what is needed to be accepted in the healthcare systems. I will stop here. Uh, thank you. Uh, where do we stand exactly in terms of sharing data? For You, you, you say that we, we need to be more connected to make sure that uh, doctors can share data, but uh, it, it, seems, uh, it seems maybe we are at the very beginning of this process, but uh, maybe you can explain what, what, yeah, where so at we least, stand in Germany. Yes, sorry. At least from Germany, we are really standing at the beginning, right? I mean, we now develop the electronic patient record, which is out there, which should be the data exchange platform, which is like developing very, very slowly. Um, so from a like critical perspective, we are really at the beginning, probably like 15 years behind every other industry we are, we are, we are looking at and we are supporting. But to be a more positive approach, I think there are a lot of examples who show us how we can actually connect and exchange data. And I think the, the, for us, the challenge is how can we, how can we like do you know, how can we like do a leapfrog? So how can we actually jump forward in the healthcare system, uh, keeping the data sovereignty within like with the patient, with the uh, health system within Europe, and then use the data. But at the moment, we are really standing at the total beginning, to be very honest. Sophie Bossa, how much do you believe in digitalization to help reduce uh, the burden? On the a lot. It all starts with having the right data in order to better prevent, uh, to better support, and also to, to better connect with the different kind of professionals that need to be to stand at the side of the patient. Um, I, 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 Maybe where in France do we, do we stand for the, in, in I, this process? I, I think we have uh, definitely a very clear framework uh, from a regulation point of view when it comes to patient record and we are at Corian we use it on a, a, a very uh, a systematic way for all the patient uh, and uh, and resident that we have uh, everywhere so we have the same template the same the same type of record and of course everything is uh, is done uh, under the, the the provision of a GDPR uh, regulation and Can we are actually doing the same hospitals? Yes, actually, we, we share, of course, with all the professionals that have actually something to bring uh, into, the, into this uh, uh, patient pass. And we are doing exactly the same uh, in Germany. I think the, the, because we, we are at scale, we have uh, more than uh, 250 different facilities. We have uh, 16,000 uh, uh, care professionals uh, in Germany. So they are all using exactly the same uh, type of uh, system and uh, implementing the same uh, uh, the same uh, um, uh, regulation um, where well, I really think that from a framework we have with GDPR pretty much uh, the same uh, starting point it's very much about culture 
culture of the, the, the care professionals that are kind of a little bit reluctant to share data uh, because uh, because of privacy and because also it's their data. So that's we have to come from a kind of one-to-one -one, uh, type of relation to something that is really a, a kind of ecosystem to support the patient. And this is really a, a huge change uh, for, for many professionals. And we have to organize things at scale. Uh, we uh, at Corion, we are uh, we are located in seven different countries across Europe. More than 1,000 facilities, care facilities, uh, uh, post-acute uh, primary care facilities. So we have the scale to actually work uh, with uh, ITIS providers uh, and to really structure the way we want to use data in order to support. Then, of course, we need infrastructure. We need Wi-Fi. Uh, we need uh, cloud uh, uh, with cloud commodity so we have really to do this equipment uh, and invest uh, roughly uh, around uh, uh, 200 million uh, uh, looking forward to really do this uh, leapfrog jump that you that you were uh, that you were mentioning uh, Ludovic and this is this is definitely something um, that uh, that is key for looking forward but I'm back to what I'm saying um, we won't come to something that is fully automatized this is nothing of what we want uh, care is about relationship is about people standing for people um, and we it all start with that we need to have the right number of uh, caregivers all across the board and we need to double the number of paramedics we train every day every every year and all the all the players needs to contribute to that effort for the time being um, it's not at scale that's my at least in France this is not at scale training is done uh, very much under the, the, the supervision of hospital public hospital and they are doing a huge work in uh, training and integrating young professionals. I think all the players should actually uh, come to the dual system that is working so well in Germany and, and having a kind of uh, doubling the number of professionals that are trained uh, on a yearly basis. If we don't do that, I, I really admit it, the system will collapse. Mm. The system will collapse because it's just not bearable for the ones that are acting now as care professionals to be in such a, under, uh, a, a, a kind of uh, subcritical uh, number of people uh, uh, being present. So we have to change the scale and this is, this is happening now, not in 10 years, now. For the time being, we are actually attracting a lot of people from outside of Europe. I think that 60% of the professionals have been actually coming from a, a one country outside of Europe. So it means that we are stealing resources from other countries to actually uh, support our own care needs. This is, and we are still, at least in France, with a 7% unemployment rate. This is not acceptable. So we have to change and it all starts with people and of course having the right uh, working environment, working condition, providing people with the right equipment, making sure that they are not document documenting, uh, so really reporting on all what they are doing uh, in, in written form. Of course we can do a lot to make their life easier, we have to and this is also a quality issue, but we have to train and to attract and to maintain the right number of paramedics in our system. Katarina Otherwise, maybe. it doesn't work. Katarina, maybe. How do, you, do we make sure, and uh, Gofried, I am sure you will want to react, how do, you, do we make sure we have enough people and, uh, and, and we are able to, 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 to make them get the good formation? And how, how do you see that? Um, yeah, I believe that also, as has been said before, that we need to work. Uh, we need to work together, and that um, I wouldn't say that digital is the only solution. Digital is just one part of the solution, as we just learned that it needs. We need people, and we need to train people, and that all will take. Um, it will take some time and some really big resources. And in the meantime, um, as um, said, I truly believe that all the people who are already doing this job and all the, uh, from our perspective, again, with a focus on the informal caregivers, but of course it needs to work together. Um, um, these people need to be empowered and they need to have hybrid uh, solutions to make 
their life better in a way that they are equipped and enabled to actually take care of people because as said it's a very it's a very tough job and um, what I believe what would help us um, and uh, again I believe we could agree on this that we, we need to uh, enable constant improving solutions and enable constantly improving empowerment of caregivers because in Germany and in Germany we have laws for digital solutions for healthcare apps for digital nursing apps we have that and uh, like so-called digas and deepas um, uh, but um, they need to go through a certain approval process, which might be hard for some uh, solutions that, that as us might have to actually get to the market because um, these, um, to get uh, reimbursement, because uh, digital solutions are tested partly like medicine. And as you know, medicine is developed and approved over years, and then there is a certain formula, and this formula will be used from then on. However, if we apply the same, um, if we apply the same same to digital solutions, it very, it's very difficult because at least for us, we are working constantly. We are really daily in contact with informal caregivers to really cater the best to their needs, to really help them, not just, just uh, saying it, but really improving their lives and looking at what they need. And this is an agile system. We are improving our software every two weeks in a day, like in a bi-weekly sprint, like in a two-week sprint. So um, we need to um, I believe that we need to work together and that we need to be more bold and I believe more brave that we can have hybrid solutions that work together and um, be a little bit more brave because digital solutions might be a start. It's not um, solutions that you have, you build once and then you can use it forever. It needs to be, it needs to be updated. It needs to be relevant as possible to empower informal caregivers. And so ultimately, digital solutions are just one part for me as the answer. And we need to work together and to empower, I believe, at scale professionals uh, and uh, non professionals, informal caregivers, um, a number of people and actually fulfilling their, their needs. Thank you. Maybe, Gottfried, one last word. Do you think we have, uh, in Germany or in France, there is a, a too conservative approach regarding health, uh, health digitalization? Because maybe we know uh, health data is a, it's a critical data and uh, there are risks associated with uh, cyber attacks, uh, even in hospitals. So, but do we have all, uh, even that to be uh, less conservative regarding uh, health data and uh, digitalization in health? I think, so first of all, nothing to add. We have to train more people. We have to get the people back into work. I mean, in Germany, huge problem. A lot of people, caregivers, are just working half-time because they tell us they can't do it full-time job. It's too much, right? So how can we make their life easier? Already mentioned. So train more. Get the people into the job who are now there just for half time. Like support applications in the system. And last but not least, because it's a real challenge and it's a huge transformation for the whole system which is, again, spending a lot of money. But the second point is, it's also a huge opportunity for Europe. That's, that's, I mean, this is what you mentioned, probably. We shouldn't be only afraid of that. We should also see the opportunities we are having there. Because we are talking, again, we're talking about care, we're talking about health care, we're talking about sensitive data. And I think we have a lot of intelligent brains in our system developing wonderful competitive applications who could solve the problem. And the market in Europe is vast, right, to, to, to bring that. But the need of, and this is what I meant, like we have to adapt the rules, the regulations between the markets, because what you need as a company is a possibility of scaling your solutions. If we don't offer that, I will tell you, the data will be used, the applications will be developed, but they will come from other continents probably to our country. So instead of like being afraid of should we use data or shouldn't we use data, of course we should use data because it will help us to have a better personalized healthcare approach to help you as an individual and not you as a statistic figure yeah, to support you. But we really have to see the opportunity, then also give the funds from the, from the system system for this opportunity for digitalization and we have to do that on a European approach because if we are stuck in our lovely historically developed national systems 
we will lose the digital like competition which is going on worldwide in healthcare. And I tell you, I think healthcare, especially because of the data sensitivity, should be the area where Europe should stand especially together and work on that. So just like on a very positive uh, closing words maybe for this topic as well. Thank you very much.